ສົມມັນເຈີຍອັນກໍຈົ້ອງຍົມເລະປະກາດມັນຕໍກິດດໍານາການສັບມະນາການໃຫ້ຊິກິດມັນຕໍນີ້ສົມບຸກຄົນ Thank you, Mr. President. Um, before I do commence, recommence, I've been reminded uh, to inform uh, the Chamber and all parties that in relation to the international armed conflict documents, I advised the Chamber about earlier on, there will be booklets provided to all parties for their consideration in the same manner Returning Dr. Edison to the Standing Committee, are you able to tell us how many meeting minutes of the Standing Committee survived? My recollection, Mr. Prosecutor, is that the Office of the Co-Prosecutor is in possession of approximately 20 different meeting minutes almost certainly comprise a small portion of the total number. Just on that last point, help us with um, your, what led you to your conclusion that it was almost certainly a small number of the, the meetings that took place. Yes, Mr. Prosecutor. The selection of standing committee meeting minutes comes from a relatively compressed period of time during the democratic Cambodian regime, principally in late 1975 and the first half of 1976. The dates on some of these meeting minutes suggest that the standing committee met rather frequently on some occasions twice in a single day to confer on different topics. There is no reason to believe that the standing committee did not continue through the remainder of the tenure of Democratic Cambodia to meet on a similarly frequent schedule, but due to the exigencies of war, the policies of extreme secrecy of the Communist Party of Cambodia, and a determined effort at document and archive destruction prior to their evacuation at Phnom Penh on 6 and 7 January 1979. It appears the vast majority of those have been lost. Thank you. Thank you. In the light of the ruling earlier on, I don't propose to go through with you the standing committee meeting minutes individually, but are you able to help us in perhaps more general terms? Who attended these meetings? Whether members of the standing committee only or others outside the standing committee in general were the issues were discussed what guided the meetings the Edison Mr. Prosecutor Yes, Mr. Prosecutor Standing committee meetings were always 
attended by at least two and usually more members of the standing committee. Although several members of the standing committee had responsibilities as zone secretaries and thus they were frequently away from Phnom Penh and infrequently attended the meetings. Was not a member of the standing committee. But based on the selection of the standing committee meeting minutes, we have usually attended. If I recall correctly, in fact, only new and chair attended standing committee meetings more often than Kiel Sampan. Frequently. Senior cadre from the zones, from ministries, and or from military units would be invited to attend standing committee meetings to report on the situation and to receive instructions from the standing committee. The range of topics discussed in the standing committee meetings that we have is ubiquitous. It covers all imaginable topics, politics, organization, economics, military and security affairs, international politics, in short, the entire range of topics that a governmental executive would have to deal with on a daily basis, the affairs of the American people. Thank you. I would like you to discuss, as I list them, the different methods by which the standing committee communicated with the subordinate units around Cambodia and within the party. Uh, firstly, can I ask you please to discuss the directives that were sent out to all echelons from the standing committee, and perhaps you may refer to two documents in particular, document number 36 on your index from Office 870 on the 1st of January 1979 entitled Announcement of Steady and Absolute Combat Against the Yuan Enemy and Document 138 again from Office 870 two days later the 3rd of January 1979 entitled by 870 and was present in the So that's document 36 and document 138 directives. Yes, Mr. Prosecutor. These two documents were issued by Office 870 at a time when democratic Cambodia was entering an extremely grave crisis. The first document dated 1 January 1979 was issued approximately one week after Vietnamese forces had launched a massive Invasion 
ពីពេលដែលអ្នកកាលជាបច្ចេកនោះឯកសារជាជាក់លាក់មួយនេះដិស្ត្រីប៊ូតេតដ៏ហើយបានបានចាក់វិធានការប្រចាំដើម្បី
the other methods by which the Standing Committee communicated with its subordinate units. Could you please, Dr. Etchison, discuss the sessions at the party training school and what took place there from your knowledge? The party training school, Mr. Prosecutor, was a venue where cadre of the were indoctrinated with what was known as the line, which might be translated into ordinary language as the policy of the party. And the government These sessions were held regularly Not just at the central level, but also in the cadre from the zone, the sectors, the districts, and so on, so that everyone could be appraised of the current policy lines of the party and the government. These sessions were often led and taught by Nguyen Chia and or Kyo Sam Pon. Moving on to the Communist Party of Kampuchea rallies held in Phnom Penh at the sports stadium. Could you perhaps discuss these as a method by which the Standing Committee communicated with the lower echelons? Yes, Mr. Prosecutor. The stadium rallies that were organized by the party center appeared to perform a similar function to that of the party school, but on a larger scale. Very large groups, stadium-sized groups of cadre or combatants, or cadre and combatants, would be gathered together and lectured on the achievements and goals of the revolution and the policies of the party. This was also a regular occurrence. In fact, I believe on the case file there is some film footage of some of these rallies showing that they were often attended by the entire standing committee, many of whom would proceed to address the rallies on various topics. Thank you. Moving on to another way in which the standing committee communicated the line to its subordinate units, I'd like you to, Dr. Edison, talk about the state radio of Democratic Kampuchea, and perhaps if you could discuss this in conjunction with document 55 on your index, which is entitled Standing Committee minutes of meeting of propaganda work, 8th of March, 1976. Yes, Mr. Prosecutor. 
This document dated 8 March 1976 is the minutes of a standing committee meeting which is titled Minutes of Meeting on Propaganda Work. It records the instructions of the party center to the organization's propaganda organs on how they should popularize uh, disseminate information about the purported election to be held in Democratic Cambodia on 20 March 1976. And it includes detailed instructions on the precise content that these messages should contain, the time that they should be disseminated, and the form in which they should be disseminated, whether on the radio or through face-to-face -face meetings or organized in various locales. Excusez-moi, est-ce qu'on est qu pourrait demander à avoir chaque fois qu'on parle d'un document la note de bas de page pour nous permettre de nous retrouver plus Merci. Notamment ce dernier document dont vous venez de parler, sur l'expert. I don't have the footnote in the table to hand. The exercise would be carried out just as easily by the defence as by the co-prosecutors. And unless the witness can help us it would entail us doing exactly the same job as requested by the defence. I'm sorry, it would, would require the defence to do exactly what we would do. Mr. President, I believe that this document is cited in the report, uh, but I do not have an easy way to find that section. Um, if uh, the court so desires, I could take whatever time is necessary to locate it in the document. To the assistance of all parties, we have found using a very simple word search on the PDF document at footnote 86. All the parties need do is to conduct a word search on a PDF document and that footnote will come up or the multiple notes will come up. Because as... Um, my colleague reminds me some of the references appear multiple times in multiple footnotes. For example, this one also appears at footnote 92. Thank you, Mr. President. Dr. Etchison, you have already discussed several issues of the DK periodical revolutionary flag, and I'd like to ask you some questions more generally. Do you have any opinion on how widely this magazine was read? in democratic Cambodia, to whom was it distributed? Thank you. Uh, Mr. President, I would like to 
look at it adjacent but look at it my understanding is that the magazine or journal revolutionary flag was designed to be read by all full rights members of the party uh, without exception and in fact Studying the information that was contained revolutionary flag issues to the cadre under their command. Perhaps I can ask you to illustrate my next question by two editions of revolutionary flag. And the question is how the standing committee may have used the magazine as a political training aid or as a way in which the political line was disseminated across the country. The two editions I'm concerned with are document 46 in the index, a revolutionary flag magazine from June 1977. And document 48, a revolutionary flag special edition of December 1977 to January 1978. That question, please, Dr. Jefferson. Yes, Mr. Prosecutor. Look, Edison, but look, the first of these two issues of revolutionary flag was from June 1977. And it's a particularly interesting example of revolutionary flag. In this issue of revolutionary flag, the party center awarded what they called the honorary red flag to three different districts within Democratic Cambodia that the party center had judged were engaging in exemplary revolutionary behavior in terms of meeting the three tons per hectare production target and in upholding revolutionary principles. Those three districts were Prasat District, Tramkok District, and Kampong Trilok District. These districts were put forth to the rest of the party as role models to be emulated. Following this relatively brief award, uh, award letter or announcement, there is a, a long essay that exhorts party members to search for and eliminate Borrowing enemies by sweeping them away using, using and I quote, absolute measures in a zero tolerance manner and without hesitation. This language was interpreted by cadres around the country as a signal to increase the intensity and the scope of purchase. Moreover, this particular essay goes on to identify a likely source of enemies as being among the new people. 
ដែលគឺអំណាចសេកឹនឌអ៊ីហ្សាំពលគឺតែវត្តដែលដេតឌីសេមបើ it's important to recall that this issue of flag again came at a time of crisis in democratic Cambodia. Vietnam was during this period engaged in a incursion an armed incursion into the territory of the Democratic Cambodia that penetrated 20 kilometers or more along the two countries' shared border. This issue of the magazine exhorted the population and the Revolutionary Army of Cambodia to resist that armed incursion and it also, interestingly, offered justifications and explanations for a number of policies of Democratic Cambodia that had become known to be unpopular among the masses, such as the forced evacuation of the cities, the appropriation of all policies, uh, all, all uh, property, that is, um, persecution of Cambodians of Vietnamese ethnicity, and the destruction of all classes but peasants and workers. This issue of revolutionary flag also has an extensive section describing why based people are superior to new people. Uh, in other words, why peasant classes are superior to the former urban classes. Thank you. Just one slight clarification. You mentioned in the first of those two documents that there were honorary red flag awards to three districts. And one of those districts you described as being Kampong Tralak. Earlier, in answer to questions from my national colleague, you mentioned that Doik had selected young boys from a Kampong Tralak district to serve with him at S21. Are they one and the same district or are they two districts from your understanding? The Kampong Trelok district mentioned in the 3rd June 1977 issue of Revolutionary Flag is indeed the same Kampong Trelok district from which the recruited young boys into the staff of S21. And what about of course, thank you, Your Honor. K A M P O N G, new word T R A L A C H.
Just to complete Dr. Asherson, our discussion of the ways in which the Standing Committee communicated with its subordinate echelons. I'd like you please to discuss how individual Standing Committee members would travel to the zones to collect information and issue directives. And if you would please cast your attention to document 52 in your index, the minutes of the standing committee's visit to the North West Zone, August 20 to 24, 1975. Yes, of course, Mr. Prosecutor. This is an unusual example of standing committee meeting minutes because rather than reporting on a single meeting that occurred on a particular day for some number of hours, this standing committee meeting minute កំណត់ហើយនៅអង្គប្រជុំរបស់គណៈអាចារ្យត្រៃនេះបានដែលកាលពីការធ្វើដំណើរទៅមូលដ្ឋានដែលគណៈអាចារ្យត្រៃបាន
thank you. We've spent a little time discussing the different ways in which the standing theatre communicated with the lower One final comment from you, Dr. Acheson, on this issue. Can you tell us, please, the overall prominence within each mode of communication of the political line of smashing of enemies? I hope you've understood my question. It was a little convoluted. Yes, Mr. Prosecutor. I think I understand. The Chamber and the parties will find in this listing of documents and we'll find discussed throughout my report on the hierarchy of democratic numerous examples of telegrams and reports that were sent from the various zones to the party center describing developments in each of those zones. Typically, these reports covered security issues, economic production issues, and organizational development issues. In your average example of such a report, there would be five pages of reporting devoted to the topic of internal enemies and measures taken to deal with the internal enemies. one page reporting on economic production and perhaps half a page of reporting on economic development. This pattern repeats itself in communications and from an analytical point of view, it suggests to me that the zone leadership understood that the party center was most interested in the topic of the search for internal enemies above and beyond questions of economy and organizational building. Thank you, Dr. Etchison. In fact, you anticipated my next question, which was the communication the from the zones and the sectors and the district and the other administrative and military units to the party center. And I'd like to ask you if you could discuss the system of reporting in general terms to the party center. And perhaps if you can rely or refer to the document 37, the decision of the Central Committee regarding a number of matters from 30 and I stress this is specifically on the issue of reporting to the Centre from the regions and zones. 
Yes, Mr. Prosecutor. Look at your son, but looks at the ban. The statutes of the Communist Party of Cambodia specifically require that each echelon of the party report regularly to its next superior echelon. In the document to which you refer, the 30 March 1976, Put a specific interval on that statutory reporting requirement when it describes a regime of weekly reporting to office 87. And indeed, you can see Patterns of weekly reporting from the zones to the center. And some of these reports from the zones to the center. They also describe their own internal reporting regime. And although I can't give you a specific citation on the top of my head, there is even an apology because at one echelon in the zone, the reporting is only happening at a 10-day interval rather than one week interval. It would appear from what you have described, referring to the statutes of the party, that the general principle was communication should be to the immediately superior echelon. Paragraph. 72 of your report, you describe how in some cases sectors communicated directly with the party centre rather than communicating to the zones. And you say how this may have been particularly common for security could you explain for us why you reached this conclusion? Or how you reached this conclusion? Yes, Mr. Prosecutor. It appears from the documents we have obtained as a general matter, communicating through channels was highly respected throughout the organization of the Communist Party of Cambodia. However, it also appears that the party center, the ultimate echelon of the party, did not feel constrained they often reached down into the organization to obtain information or to issue specific policy directives and especially to affect issues of internal security whether it be uh, gathering information about a particular individual, making changes in local leadership at the behest of the center, 
or arranging purges. Thank you. I'd now like to move to a different topic concerning the Revolutionary Army of Campuchia. Are you able to help us, Dr. Edgerson, with how many minutes of meetings survive from meetings convened by Son Sen, the chairman of the general staff, with all the secretaries and deputies of divisions and independent regiments. Previously referred in my testimony before this chamber, documents that are generally titled meetings of division commanders and deputy commanders and commanders of independent regiments. We have at least 13 examples of these kinds of meeting minutes which appear to have happened on a, a very frequent basis in some periods as often as weekly in which the senior leaders of the Revolutionary Army of Kampuchea would gather at the General Staff Headquarters, which I believe was synonymous with Son Sen's office, to report on the situation in their areas of operation and to receive instructions from Son Sen. Thank you. Could I also ask you perhaps to discuss the meetings that were convened by Son Sen with selected secretaries and deputies and independent regiments and discuss the reasons for such Yes, Mr. Prosecutor. It appears from various documents that it was common in conjunction with these larger general staff meetings that would bring in the leadership of all of the centrist divisions to the general staff. That Sun Sen would also organize meetings with the senior staff of individual divisions or independent regiments in order to describe various particular policies that you wish to carry out for specific regions. These meetings would individual divisions often appeared to be concerned strictly with security matters rather than a, the broader range of topics that was covered in the general staff meeting, including security, economic production issues, and general policy issues. Mr. Prosecutor, 
Before I ask you to illustrate that, could I please ask you to discuss for us the nature of communications within the military and whether, in general terms, it was always vertical to superior or whether there was horizontal communication between individuals divisions or independent regiments, do you understand that? Yes, Mr. Prosecutor, as a general rule, throughout the administrative, political, and military apparatus of democratic Cambodia. Very ruthlessly enforced. For example, if the leaders adjacent sectors that were in separate zones had some issue needed to discuss instead of communicating directly horizontally between the two sector secretaries. Instead, they had throughout their communications through their own zone leadership and on the to the so that in effect the party center was the central communications node for the entire organization, the central office telephone switch, if you will. This way, the party center was the only organ that knew what was happening everywhere in the country. Repeatedly, in S21 confessions, admissions, that people had communicated outside of that strict vertical hierarchy were treated as proof of truthfulness. This vertical communication requirement is even more strictly enforced in the military echelons. Thank you. I'd like you to discuss S21's place within this communication network that you've described and refer you to one particular set of meetings, of minutes from a meeting. Um, to which you've already referred, document number 75 in your index, which is a, a meeting of Comrade Tal, Division 290 and Division 170 on the 16th of September 1976. And I wonder, Mr. President, if you can place on the screens, the Khmer document um, that uh, my colleague Mr. Ford has and will have shortly on his television screen and have a section of it there. Thank you, Mr. President. I note the time also. Um, perhaps five minutes or so. Not long.
บารุชนสมอันจึงให้สมอันญาตตามปัจเจกิติได้เหมือนสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำหรับผมสำห
านจำนวนนาหมุยจำนวนตีปีนั่งอ่านในขนมลงวงกระหอมนั่งเลิกเลงแต่ชั่วโมงมนุษย์มาเด้พระเจ้าแห่งสหรัฐอเมริกาเป็นเหมือนกันกับสิ่งที่ทุกคนต้องการในการประกอบการบริหารจัดการสังคมจัดการบริหารจัดการสังคมจัดการบริหารจัดการสังคมจัด s m a mật đ ô i miên mật tệ, cai p r c h ú m s m a mật s ó c nâng tát, con p l m rồi chết, ban ai cập hiệp khné, t r ờ s n a g i ọ c h m u a mà phai p r m b u n nẹt tiệt, cử muối, hút p ế n lấy, vi ăn lì lệ, pì, thạch sán, p o s p h i a bảy, t h a o s ạ p h á y buồn, số s ấ n พรำคำยันพรำมุยงวนตุยพรำปีนูพนพรำบิคิวซัดพรำบุญยกสังดอกแอมสดดอกมุยพูดสมเอลดับปีเป็นปิงดับบีเกลื่อนดับบุญองสนดับพรำสกไขดับพรำมุยเกณฑ์งอนดับพรำปีตัดสามันดับพรำบีสามเมตรดับพรำบุญกงเสือนมาพายกายเอื้อนมาพายมุ้ยลงสาเร็ดมาพายปีกายสกมาพายบายจันกุนมาพายบุญกองสาเร็ดมาพายพรำกีโสพัดมาพายพรำมุ้ยสกเปื้อมาพายพรำปีสันสองมาพายพรำบายปดสกคอนมาพายพรำบุญพระพอลีชั่วสนาอันนี้กู้ซอมาพายมุ้ยนังกองปลมรอยจัดปลอจมขณีสมรักกลายปีดับมุ้ยเนี่ยได้ปลอจมสมรักปีไงดับพรำใครพรำบุญมุ้ยโชเลอร์ฮัทพอลบัญเจรบซอมาพายมุ้ยนังกองปลเคยสกามาเพียบเจสไนเจียบันตอมันตอบเริ่มแต่งโชว์เลโกลกาองกากำนัดปวกสายสโลไลอาจะกรีตรยกองประจุมยลสอบสมรัดยกชมูแต่งมาไพประบุเนี่ยติดนิติดขอบคุณมาดามกราฟิเอถ้าคุณสามารถแสดงความคิดเห็นกับประธานาธิบดีของประเทศนักข่าวบอกบาปบรรทมติเอตคือยมจังไอแอนอัตบอดบรรทมติเอตได้ทัดในขนมประกอบกระหอมอันบรรทมอันจุลอยมือติเอตได้เหมือนบรรทมกระหอมกดกุ้งปนจุ่มไปในขังกระหอมมองอ่อนนี่มวยตรายทวีตามปีศาจระบายยืงได้บานทลอบยกปุ่นนี้เชี่ยบรรทมบรรทมทวีไม่กลมเอาอองกาจูจระบอลดับไม่กับไออองกับเพียบจูดจอดบอลจวบกระดับองกับเพียบเอาจวบขนมไหนนั่งแรซ่าการสังกัดไอบานอ่อแยกสไดปีกรูปีเพียซ่าวิธีดำนาคาชีมุ้ยซอมมาพายมุ้ยดับไม่ยกนั่งจัดตั้งกรุบกรององกับเพียบขนมมไปดอกปุ๋ยเวียเ
And finally, the third Sắp and final box highlighted in red, Mr. President, if you could direct so the to read that and few lines there. Thank you. ខាងកងពលពីរយកាយសិបត្រូវសមភ័យមួយនិងកងពលនិងកងពលសងខាងគ្នាចាប់យកពីកន្លែងដាក់ឡានតែម្ដងខាងកងពលមរយចិត្តសិបត្រូវសមភ័យមួយនិងកងពលពីគ្រោះគ្នាយកវិធានការលឹកលឹកអត់ជាក់ស្ដែងដើម្បីយកពួកទាំងសាយ
nhưng ai lưu một cái thằng đám nó cứ miên cục sọp hơi hay bị bị những con cá bỏ prai nó khi mà chơi và răng chơi bà đấy thì phần miên bò tùy ở nơi nắng đôi chia chơi bà lo hơi Thank you, Mr. President. My final question to the witness for the week. Dr. Edgerson, here we have had read out for us minutes of meetings of a meeting describing S20, how S21 has met with divisions, has discussed and identified prisoners, and has deliberated and collaborated on methods of arrest. Can you tell us please how that fits into the general Yes, Mr. Prosecutor. According to this document, another person attending this meeting was who was the Deputy Prime Minister for National Defence, of the General Staff, and a member of the Party Centre Military Committee. Thus, the accused person liaised upward to the very apex of the in the Communist Party of Kampuchea, and then reached down through Son Sen into operating divisions to assist in the planning and conduct of what became a very large scale per military affair Just to clarify, in your expert opinion, does this document give permission from the centre that units can contact each other, or contact each other, or how would you describe what we've done? Look, I just son. Yes, it seems clear to me, Mr. Prosecutor, that this operation is being carried out under the direct authority of the Prime Minister, authorizing such communications between S21 and the targeted units as necessary to implement the plan to purge the Prime Minister. Yes, Mr. President, I apologize for straying. ไอ้ครั้ง រូបភាពគឺអាចពេលពង្វែលមកសថានភាពដើមមួយហើយហើយមកដោយថាពេលវេលាក៏ដល់ពេលត្រូវសម្រាក់ហើយហើយ
ได้เมียนปัญหาหรือกาวิลีได้เตรียมนัดได้มูลไฮด์สะสมจุดเดียวมือเทียดได้ยังบันปากกาจุดเรียบจุดนอพิกีอัมพีดมนาคาในสุสักไข่กัมหรือบ้านในจุดเดียวได้จำบันได้สากอดมันเมียนปีวิลีสำหรับมุกเธอสัมนาคาในจุดปูมุกองจุดจุดเดียเราบอกยังบานตีกลายเป็นไงตีแบบไฟพรำหนึ่งไงตีแบบไฟแบบมุ้ยโดยเฉพาะนั่นคือจะปูกาเธอสำนักกาบันโตเลยบันดิตแกรจิสันนี่โดยซาลูกบันดิตมีนวัตมีนในกามิชีในพรุ่งปีนี้ยังยังนั่งเลยพิลสมทรอบนามุ้ยดำไปทัวบันโตจำในไอ้จับสัปดาเราคราวนี้คือไงเดิมสัปดาห์ยังคือสักไข่กัมเนี่ยจุ่มเนียงได้จำบัดได้กอดเมนปีลวิเลียแต่ปีทั้งไงเนอะจังจังปูลุ่มดึกคือสมรุ่งจำดำไปอ่องยิมเรียกับนอตกาวิเลียสมทรอบน้ำมุ้ยได้เลยโลกตามกาวผิดเพี้ยได้เมียนด้วยเฮ้ยดำไปจุ่มลูกหมกบรรทอนสักไข่กัมดำไปบรรจบบรรเทาบรรทอนมันกำหนดในปีนี้ที่ให้เอาอย่างไรสมประกาศอาดำนาคาสัมนาคาสำหรับไทยนี่เติมนี่ให้สมอันตรายมุติคงแข็งนมจนเดือดเจ้าตลอดจากการมุติคงแข็งเว้นให้เอาหนองกอดมกันสาสัมนาคาในไงที่ปรับไงที่มาพยายามมาบรรมุนมองผมบุญให้เพื่อกีเดเพื่อป้อนกับโดยที่นี่ให้มันไตรตระกาตำรวจดอลลูกบันดิตแนวจุ่มเนียงยังไม่เอาคนบันเวอร์ตลอดตื่นยังลงเดินทางบักคน